Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's one of the like, channels I sometimes watch. There's a guy that always gets videos. Hello YouTube, and he doesn't just like it. It's really annoying. And he has the worst part about it is he has like the worst hair ever. It's kind of like, all over the place and just messy, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess he's my roll up or something. Actually, I can't manage to roll up the goatee that he has. So anyway, he always says, "Hello YouTube's." Of course, he starts his video sitting in a comfy chair, whereas I start my video standing up and tired, so I don't know. Good times. So, of course, as soon as I stop to introduce myself, I walk over and sit on the front right table behind the scenes back. You get to take off my shoes, too, because, uh, I don't know, I like not having my shoes on while I teach. <laughs> Fun facts. All right, problem number one, four over eight. Oh, simplify each fraction, try these out. Remember, to simplify a fraction, you have to divide the top and the bottom number by the same thing. Yeah. So number one, we can divide the top and bottom numbers each by four. And that gives us two, no, four divided by four is one over two, one half. Here we can divide them each by two. And that gives us one fifth. Here, there's quite often multiple options. We can divide them each by two. That would give us four over six. We can divide by two again, and that would give us two over three. Um, yeah. The other thing you could do is what if we divided by four right away? Depending on the situation, quite often you might have multiple numbers you can divide by. If you feel like you do better by dividing one thing at a time, that works. If you feel better that you, if you feel like you do better dividing a large number, that works too. Eight divided by four is two. Twelve divided by four is three. Five over fifteen. You know, try out four, five, and six on your own. 7 through 10 each have an important lesson to learn, so let's go over those. I want to make sure we learn the lessons here. 8 over 4. We can divide those by 4, that gives us 2 over 1. We can leave it that way. Notice it says simplify each fraction. That's kind of emphasizing the word fraction. So simplifying it down to a 2 may not be considered correct, depending on how much of a stick that your teacher is, how much they wanted to have that specific answer. For me, if I say fraction, I probably want a fraction. And for what we're doing today, it's almost always better to have it as a fraction. Okay, number eight, zero over five. This one always throws kids off a little bit. Some kids have fled zero over one. This is one of the few ones that you want to simplify just a single number. Think about it this way, if you ever wonder. With fractions, always think of top number, that's how many things you have. Bottom number is how many people you're dividing it among. We have zero things you're dividing among five people. How much does each person get? Nothing. They get zero. Nothing. Zero divided by anything equals zero with one exception. So we have that 8 divided by 4 equals 2 over 1, or just 2. We can rewrite that into multiplication. 2 times 4 equals 8. If we have 0 divided by 0, eh, not 10, 0 divided by 0, that equals something. I don't know what it equals. Let's call it x. If we read that, rewrite that as multiplication, that would be 0 times x equals 0. What number, when you multiply it by 0, makes 0? every number. Zero divided by zero can equal anything. Then you get to calculus, there'll be problems with that, where sometimes you have zero over zero and it equals five or four. Most of the time it equals one. Uh, it's the most common situation, but it could equal anything. I could actually devise a problem that equals where zero divided by zero equals anything. It's sort of fun. Good problems. Three over eight. What can we divide both three and eight by? Well, we can divide them each by one. And that gives us three over eight. So, now we've got a 3 and an 8. What can those each be divided by? They can each be divided by 1. And that gives us 3 on the top, and then 8 divided by 1 is 8. Uh, I can go on like this for quite some time. Uh, last year in my classes, we spent like 5 full minutes dividing them by 1 over and over again. Good times. If it can't be simplified, don't, don't do it. 4 divided by 0. Let's go back and do this multiplication thing again. 4 over 0 equals some number x. So... Think about 0 times x equals 4. What number, when you multiply it by 0, makes 4? No number. There isn't a number that does that. 4 divided by 0, they some, we call undefined. Sometimes we refer to it as 1 over 0. But you need to know that 1 over 0 is undefined. Any number divided by 0, undefined. Let's look at another way of, let's see another way of thinking about this. Let's say you've got 10, and we divide it by 1. That equals just 10. Let's divide it by a bigger number, like 10 divided by 2. If we divide it by a bigger number, we get 
Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I'm doing this wrong. It's always the risk when I do my lesson after waiting a little while. 10 divided by 10 is 1. If we divide it by a smaller number, 10 divided by 5 is 2. Divide by a smaller number still, divide 10 by 2, we get 5. Notice as this number we're dividing by is getting smaller, our answer is getting bigger. 10 divided by 1 equals 10. If we do 10 divided by, let's say, 0.1, or 10 divided by 0.5, how many 0.5s are in 10? 20. The smaller number we divide by, the bigger our answer gets. 10 divided by 0.1 would equal 100. 0.01, 1,000, 0.001, 10,000, and so on. Super fun. And so that means that this number must be infinitely big because zero is the smallest number that you could divide by, the tiniest little number you have. On the other hand, what if we divide it by negative 10? We get negative 1. Divide by negative 5, we get negative 2. Divide by negative 2, we get negative 5. Negative 1, negative 10. Divide by negative 0.5, negative 20. In other words, as we divide by a very small negative number, we get a very big negative answer. Divide by negative 1, 0.1, negative 100. If we divide it by the most infinitely tiny number ever, 0, we should get an infinitely negative answer. Undefined is equal to infinity and negative infinity at the same time. So it is infinitely large and infinitely small, infinitely positive, infinitely negative, infinitely good, infinitely bad, all at the same time. And that is why we say it's undefined because you can't really define something like that. It's just insane. If it comes up and it actually has a report, it has to do with this thing called slope. If you have any graph paper, give that out and use it now. If you do not, I highly recommend you grab a piece of graph paper for me and watch the video with graph paper. All right? Because this is, most of this is going to be graphing. The first thing I ask my students to do on this lesson is to graph, to draw this line on the paper as closely as they can to the actual thing. So pause the video, try doing that now. Okay. Hopefully you drew a line that looks like this. I'm not there to look at your line to see if it looks like this. If you have the correct line, then you should have it so that like it is three spaces up, six spaces to the right. And that would be the correct line. The way that you count those spaces, that you go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, that gives you three into six, so three over six, that is called slope. This three over six is the slope of this line. Now what if, I always have students every time that they'll say, well, what I did is I actually went up one space and then to the right two spaces. So that gives us a slope of 1 over 2, and then up 1 to the right 2 again, and so on. That's the same thing. It's a simplified fraction, the same thing. See that? Now, let's look at another line that's kind of similar to this. Uh, let's say instead I had the same 3 and 6 spaces, but instead it's 3 down and 6 to the right. Copy that line down. Do it. It really is helpful. So, by the way, the best way to copy it down is using that smaller slope. Down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two. Counting to two, you don't make very many mistakes. I don't. Counting to six, you make a lot more mistakes. That's a common thing that I'll see among my students is that people will count to, they'll make mistakes counting up to six, but they make less mistakes counting to two, which is good. Um, yeah, counting to one, less mistakes than counting to three. This is a negative slope since it's going downhill. Since it's moving downward as you go to the right, negative. Increasing lines, positive slope. Decreasing lines, negative slope. So this is a positive 1 over 2. This is a negative 1 over 2. Try copying these two down and finding their slopes. Okay, this one. Now, we like, for slope, I like to use what I call good points. These points I've highlighted here are all good points. Notice each one has a vertical line and a horizontal line going through it, as well as our line we're finding the slope of. You should never be using points that have only two lines or only one line going through them. You should have all three. With a good point, you go up and to the right, and that tells you two over one. It is always the up or down if it's negative. If it's on top, to the right, on the bottom. Same thing here. Those are our good points. We go down and to the right. Negative two, to the right three, so negative two over three. Uh, don't ever use points that are in between like this. These points here are bad. They are terrible points. They'll mess you up. Always make sure you're only using points that are on a vertical line, a horizontal line, and the line that it goes through. And that is slope. Slope is the steepness of a line. I think of it as change in y divided by change in x. 
how the y coordinates, the up and down coordinates change, divided by the x coordinates, how they change. In calculus, they call it dy over dx, difference in y over difference in x. Sometimes delta y over delta x, that means the same thing, change in y over change in x. It's still the same concept, it's a huge concept. Notice I mentioned calculus, half of calculus is about finding the slope. In fact, more than half of calculus is about finding the slope, it's insane. It's all about slope. Try drawing lines with these slopes here, with one over three. Now let me show you how to do one over three, all right? Draw a point. From that point, go up one square, go to the right three squares, and draw another point. Up one square, to the right three squares, and draw another point. Anytime I ask you to draw a line with a specific slope, I'll always want you to do at least three points. One, two, three. The points are the key to drawing slope. The points are how I look at that when I'm correcting a quiz. I'll be like, oh, are there points in the right spots? Correct. Points not in the right spots? Not correct. Negative one over two. Down one, right two. Down one, right two. Some people draw in points intermediate, up one to the right three, up one, right three, or they draw in these triangles, that's fine. Not wrong. Try out these two here, 18 and 19, three over two and two over one. Do those on your own. Vertical lines. Vertical lines, if you look at this, it goes up one to the right zero, so one over zero. That is undefined. The way I remember that is I think of a flag. This is a flagpole, and the flag is undefined. Undef. Flat lines. It goes to the right one, but up zero. So zero over one. Up zero to the right one. Up zero, right one. I think of that as zero slope. It's like a sun coming up over the horizon. Quite often we call this line vertical. Vertical means standing straight up and down. Horizontal is what we call this line. Straight to the left and right. And school just got out. Try drawing lines of each of these slopes. Anytime you have a whole number slope, always change it to something over one. Two over one, so up two to the right one, up two to the right one. I see so many mistakes from people that don't change it to thing over one, because then they think maybe you should up two, up two, up two, and that's wrong. Or they go up two, right two, up two, right two, and that's wrong. Put it over one, up two, to the right one. Uh, I think this is as far as we got in class. Let me think here. Yes, it is. We did not get to that page with all the lines. Actually, in a couple classes we did. But most of them we did. Uh, this is slope. This is our introduction to slope. If you have questions on it, please comment, ask me. I will be happy to help you out. It is one of the most important mathematical concepts you will ever learn. It's used this year and next year and the year after that and the year after that and in calculus and in everything. So. Yeah, great concept. Love it. Have a good one. Bye.